In my last video, I made this circle cutting jig for my router, and it has some great features. A brass pivot pin that you can fabricate in your own workshop with common hand tools. All I used was an ordinary flat file. Built-in measuring tape. And if you are disinclined to drill a hole in your workpiece, you can always bring your hole with you with a pivot pin block and the additional sub-base that matches the, the thickness of the block. Capacity of the jig, it can route as large as a 36 inch radius or 6 foot diameter and as small as 4 inches. And that's a limitation just because the pivot pin assembly can't go underneath the router base. And that's a real limitation if you need to route smaller circles. So in that previous video, I gave you a preview of the small circle router jig that I'm going to make in this video. This is a prototype. I made it from MDF. I'm going to make the permanent one from Baltic Birch. A little bit different construction method. This one uses a dovetail slider with a hardwood pin that glues into a hole. It runs in a dovetail slot. But the difference is this one can get very close to the router bit. So let's get started on making the permanent jig of the small circle router jig. These are the materials I'm using. For the prototype I used MDF, quarter inch and half inch thick, but I wasn't comfortable drilling this hole this close to the end of the MDF and risking it not tearing out. So I'm going to use quarter and half inch Baltic birch instead. For the hardware, which I haven't shown you yet in use, this is a quarter inch carriage bolt and it's one and a half inches long. But this is what locks down the sliding dovetail to lock it into place. A washer and a threaded knob to go with it. And all these should be available at any hardware store. For the pivot pin, I'm using a hardwood dowel, quarter inch in diameter, and only need about an inch of it. And I also need some wood screws. I'm using number six by five eighths of an inch. The base of my router, the plunge router, is five and a half inches wide, but I'm going to be taking out, I'm going to be making two 45 degree angled cuts, and that's going to remove a saw curve, well, two saw curves. My saw blade on my table saw is an eighth of an inch thick, so measuring the curve this direction, it's an eighth of an inch. But I need to measure it this direction, and that's almost three sixteenths of an inch. And because I'm going to be making two saw curves, three sixteenths by three sixteenths, I need to add three eighths of an inch to the width that I cut out. So in the half inch MDF, I'm going to cut out, I'm going to rip a strip five and seven eighths of an inch wide at the table saw. Next, I want to make two 45 degree angle cuts to form the dovetail slot and the dovetail slider. And I want to leave a half inch on the top, the narrow side. I set my table saw up that way. Let me go make the cuts.
Next, I want to rip a piece of the quarter inch MDF, but I want to make it the same width as these three pieces of half inch now put back together. So I'm going to use those to rip, put them together, and I'm going to use those to set my rip fence. I want to make sure they don't ride up like that. So I'm holding them down flat. And I'm going to go with that. I'd rather the quarter inch was a little too wide and I had to go back and trim it than to make it too narrow to begin with. Next, I want to locate the base on the quarter inch plywood. The DeWalt has straight edges on the sides and it uses four holes, but they're not equidistant. They're further apart in this dimension than this dimension, so I can't just draw diagonal lines. I'm going to use this straight edge and line up the end, and I'll eyeball getting it even side to side, and then I'll mark the holes. The DeWalt uses pan head screws, so I'm going to counter bore for the screw heads with a Forstner bit and then drill through holes. I'm going to transfer these hole locations to the half inch plywood also. I'm going to drill those oversized. Just, they're just going to be access holes to get to the mounting screws. So I'll line everything up. Drill these over at the drill press. And here I've drilled 5 8 inch access holes all the way through, matching the four mounting holes. Next, in the quarter inch MDF, I need a centered quarter inch slot, just like this one. It's going to start an inch from the end and stop about 3 fourths of an inch from where the base is. I'll do that at the router table. <laughs> Next, I want to temporarily fasten the quarter inch Baltic birch to the half inch, and I want to get this right. The wide part of the dovetail slider on top, on the quarter inch plywood, the counter bores for the mounting holes go down, and of course the holes line up. going to temporarily fasten them together. I'm going to put some screws in it and then take them back out because I need to glue some parts together. 
I've drawn the outside shape that I want for the jig, so I'm going to be sure to make and keep the screws on the inside of the lines. Sort of like these. Next, I want to find out where the bit penetrates through the sliding dovetail. So I've got everything screwed together temporarily and mounted to the router base. I'm going to make a plunge cut with a quarter inch router bit. Now, where the router bit penetrated, I'm going to make a saw cut, but I want to keep the kerf on the long side of the uh, slider. It's for this. I, just, I did the plunge cut so I'd know where to make my saw cut. And with the kerf, of course, the hole's going to be off, but I'm going to later push them together and do another plunge cut with a 3 8 inch bit. Now I have to make my plunge cut again to recreate that hole. Now before I remove the screws and glue everything together, I'm going to cut the outside shape out so I know where to glue. I'll do that at the bandsaw and then I'll sand it. glue and then screw everything back together except for the slider.
I want to keep the glue away from the edges. If it squeezes out into the slider area, I won't be able to get it in or move it. I'm going to keep away from the narrow parts too. I'll just glue around the outside. Now I'll let the glue dry. I will take out the sliding dovetail though, just in case. I've got a 3 8 inch router bit, a straight bit installed in the router again. I've got it mounted to the jig. I'll make a plunge cut again. I've got the slider pushed tight against the fixed part. So I'll make now a 3 8 inch hole. And then I'll drill a hole for the pivot dowel. I need holes for the hardware that tighten down on the dovetail slider, a counterboard hole for the head of the carriage bolt and then a through hole. We've got the dowel pin glued into the hole. This one's ready for the carriage bolt. All I'm waiting for now is the glue to dry on the pin. So let's see it in action. Remember, if you're cutting out a disc, such as for a tabletop, you're more concerned about the distance from the center of the pivot pin to this side of the cutting edge, the edge nearest to the pivot pin. If you're cutting out a hole, like for a speaker enclosure, you're concerned about the distance from the center of the pivot pin to the far edge of the bit.
and it makes a difference how you measure. I'm set up to cut a circle four inches in diameter from this quarter inch MDF. Let me vacuum up the sawdust and I'll cut a four inch diameter hole. I've reset. I moved the dovetail slider a quarter of an inch closer to the bit. Previously I was measuring two inches from the center of the pivot to this side of the bit. Now I want to measure two inches from the center of the pivot to the far side of the bit. And it's a quarter inch bit. So now I should be making a four inch diameter hole. Let me clear away the sawdust. So let's see how we did. Here's the four inch diameter disc. And here's the four inch diameter hole. Pretty tight. Perfect. All right guys, there you go. Small circle router jig for when the large one won't do it. Thanks for watching.